The Honorable Member for Vermilion Lloydminster. Well, thank you, Madam Speaker, and uh, it's uh, my pleasure to speak on, on Bill 3 in third reading. You know, really, Madam Speaker, this boils down to one question, and one question very clearly, and that is, should we pay Canadians for donating plasma, or should we continue to pay for plasma products derived from paid American donors? Full stop. That is the question at hand here. And to bring in other issues is really to cloud that fundamental question. And one of the things that, you know, that concerns me in this, and we heard it in the speech that was just made, was that there's a concern about two factors. One is, I'll use the term, cannibalizing the volunteer base. The second is risk of viral transmission. Well, let's put the second one to bed right away. In 25 years of collecting plasma and processing it for use in patient care, there has not been a single case of viral transmission due to a, pla to a plasma transfusion. And that is a use of a paid or processed plasma product. The safety is ensured by Health Canada and after what we went through in the 80s, we have one of the most stringent systems in the world. And it's one we should be proud of. That is what safeguards patients. And those standards apply whether we are talking about blood products are collected from voluntary donors or from paid donors. There is no difference in the standard. So, so to suggest in any way that deriving products from paid donors is in any way more risky than deriving products from voluntary donors is simply false. The Creever Commission 20 years ago recommended going primarily with voluntary blood donors, but it also recognized that a lot of the problems we faced in the 80s were due to problems in the, the organizations that were doing the blood collection, not in the factor of whether you're using voluntary or, uh, or paid for donors. So, and I know there are organizations that are very concerned and are still holding to the, uh, the recommendations of the Creever Inquiry Report. A 20-year-old report at a time when plasma use and the use of plasma protein products, processed plasma, was in its infancy. And since that time, that use is burgeoning. It's growing by double digits every year. So let's put that one to bed right away. The second objection is the one about how it would affect the voluntary donor base. And you know, on face value, if you were to walk into a coffee shop and say, you know, if we started paying people for plasma donations, do you think it would affect the voluntary donor base? That people might say, well, yeah, why would I volunteer if I could get paid for it? But there's a problem. There's a difference between donating plasma for the purpose of plasma protein products and donating blood or plasma for transfusion purposes. When you donate blood, you can only do it once every eight weeks if you're a man, once every 12 weeks if you're a woman, and it takes about 20 minutes. If you're donating plasma, it takes 90 minutes, and you do it once a week. And because of those requirements, there is not a single country in the world that has been able to establish a self-sufficiency in plasma supply on a purely voluntary donor basis. Nowhere. And it, it's just simply because of the difference in donation between plasma and blood. And, you know, a lot of people aren't aware of that. A lot of people aren't aware that we're purchasing 70% of the plasma products we need in Canada from out of the country, from donors who in generally are paid. And, you know, it also ignores the fact, and we've heard a few times of the statistics, one year old from the facility that is now open in Saskatoon. And that's fine, you know, and that should continue to be monitored. But against that one single piece of evidence, that it might affect the voluntary donor pool. We have 30 years of evidence in Manitoba, in Winnipeg, where there's been a paid-for plasma collection center for 30 years, and both Can Canadian Blood Services and Health Canada have said it does not affect their voluntary donor pool. In addition, we have the evidence from countries like Germany, Austria, and the United States, where they have parallel voluntary and paid-for donor pools and their voluntary donor rates are nearly double the Canadian donor rate of 3.6 per 100 people. 
their voluntary donor rates are run in the 5.7 and 5.6 range, and yet they also have a paid-for system. So the idea that you're somehow going to affect your paid-for system is simply not borne out by the evidence. Other countries have proven that. So why would you be against this? Well, I'm going to put a very fine point on this right now. This government is protecting its union friends. Full stop. They are protecting union jobs in QP at Canadian Blood Services. Full stop. They are protecting Canadian Blood Services, which is a closed union shop. And they are trying to stop any development of any competition to Canadian Blood Services. That's the motivation here. That's who they're trying to protect. And instead of providing for plasma that could be collected and processed and a new biomedical, a whole new biomedical, and call it an industry, I thought you were in favor of diversifying the economy. I thought you were in favor of new jobs. I thought you were in favor of investment. You want to shut these all down. That is what you want by doing this. You are in, now Canadian Blood Services, they have, so they have a plan. They have a plan to invest 100 million taxpayer dollars to take their current system from 20% all the way up to 50% of the required supply. And even with an investment of 100 million taxpayer dollars, they still wouldn't get us to where we need to be. We would still need to purchase additional supplies. You know, it ignores the reality that there is no country in the world that has achieved plasma self-sufficiency. And to suggest somehow that Canada would be able to overcome that hurdle because of some factor that has yet to be identified by the proponents of this bill is simply not true. Whom we should, who, the people we should be listening to, Madam Speaker, are patients. Patients that depend on these plasma products. And I would like to quote from an editorial by Doreen Wong Rieger, who was formerly the president of the Canadian Hemophilia Society. And this is what she said. One of the most important things I learned from my four years as president of the Canadian Hemophilia Society during the public inquiry was that fear, prejudice, and politics could trump science and reason in blood-related decisions. This is a government that always says that they want to rely on science. This is a government that says it wants to rely on the data. Well, it should look at the data surrounding blood transfusion and plasma transfusion specifically. And as when we're dealing with patients, I'd like to furthermore quote from the same letter that patients with rare disorders, as well as many others, rely on plasma-derived products. On the one hand, Canada can continue to rely on products made with plasma from paid American donors. Most of our patients whose lives literally depend on these products already know and have no concerns that the donors are paid. On the other hand, if Canada were successful in setting up paid plasma donor clinics, not only might we have a greater security of supply, but we would be contributing to a worldwide need for safe plasma. But no, no, Madam Speaker, this government wants to shut that down. This government wants to keep those evil blood brokers out of Alberta. It's okay for them to set up in BC. It's okay for them to set up in Saskatchewan and Manitoba and New Brunswick because all of those provinces have welcomed this because they were forward thinking and they understand that this is a way to diversify the economy. They keep on pointing to Ontario and to Quebec. Well, the law in Quebec is nearly 30 years old. And HEMA Quebec, because that's the blood service in the province of Quebec, it's not Canadian blood services, is desperately looking for ways to increase their plasma donor pool. They are looking at spending millions and millions of dollars in advertising to try to build up that pool because they cannot monetarily compensate donors. Doesn't it just make more sense to compensate the donors and not pay all those dollars to advertising firms? So Madam, Madam Speaker, that is the issue. We've got five specific patient groups who have come out, and there are others, but specifically the Canadian Immunodeficiencies Patient Organization, CEPO. And in their brief, they comment, 
Not allowing plasma donations in Canada will encourage Canada's over-reliance on the U.S. for plasma. We are concerned that only three of some 30 plasma-derived products used by Canadians are manufactured in whole or in part by plasma collected from unpaid donors by Hema Quebec and Canadian Blood Services. That, indeed, Madam Speaker, is the challenge we have. And to simply walk away and to simply say no to the investment of $400 million, 2,000 jobs that include nurses, laboratory technicians, medical professionals, to not recognize what British Columbia, Saskatchewan, Manitoba, and New Brunswick have already recognized, that this is a medical reality and that the need for this pro these products are only increasing is to stick our proverbial heads in the sand, which by the way ostriches don't do, but it's to stick our proverbial heads in the sand and ignore reality. It is to ignore the reality that the need for these products will only grow. You know, in 2013 there was a national round table on blood products and what should be done with regards to paid plasma tra transfusions. And one of the conclusions of that round table was that, coming out of Jester Creever's recommendation, that Canada should have an open blood system, but it should consult with the public before changing the voluntary system. And because it is a public policy issue that impacts all Canadians, there was a recommendation for a cross-country public consultation and that patients that use plasma products were identified as a key stakeholder group that must be consulted on this issue, as they are the ones that are familiar with the safety issues and they are the most concerned with security of supply. I asked the minister, were they consulted? Did you talk to this key stakeholder group? My bet is you talked to the folks that you had at your press conference. Yes, the president of QP from the Canadian Blood Services who was on the podium with you that day. That is the crux of the argument, Madam Speaker. It is who are you speaking for? Are you speaking for patients? No, you're not. The patients are very clearly saying that they want to see paid for plasma donations in Canada. That is very clear. So are you speaking for unemployed Albertans who could be employed in these in these operations who could work in these plasma collection centers? Very clearly you aren't, because you're saying no to this potential source of economic diversification. You are speaking for your union friends, and that is it. It is time to speak and to broaden your perspective behind just keeping your friends in the unions happy. That is your job in here when you come into this chamber. You have a duty to all Albertans, and that duty extends beyond your friends in the unions. That is what needs to be done in terms of the decision-making here. There is overwhelming evidence, Madam Speaker, unbiased scientific evidence that shows that paid plasma donations are safe, that paid plasma donations do not cannibalize the voluntary donor supply and that paid plasma donations would provide a source of economic benefit to our province and to Canada in general and would help secure our safety and security of Canadian supply from Canadian donors. But these folks want to shut that down. Madam Speaker, in my view, Bill 3, which will close that opportunity off because Canadian Plasma Resources has said very clearly that they will go elsewhere where they are in fact welcome to set up, is one more example of how this government chases away the entrepreneur, the investor, the people who actually want to come to Alberta despite what they will tell you. That is what they are doing here. It is shameful and I'm opposed to Bill 3. Thank you, Madam Speaker.